Well, hello everyone and welcome back to our special series, Sustainability, Taking the First Step. I'm joined by Lauren Branson and Karen Lebsant. Lauren is the CEO of Calix, a leader in data-based sustainability insights for food supply chains. And Karen is the co-founder and CEO of Currajong Kitchen, one of Australia's leading savoury biscuit and cracker companies. Hello, you two. Hey, Kim. Hi. Now, now, last week, uh, Lauren presented her findings on the carbon and water and biodiversity footprint of uh, Currajong Kitchen's new product, Oakley's. Karen has had a week to go over the info, share with her team, gather her thoughts and any questions uh, for Lauren. So Karen, <laughs> how's it been? Have you got any questions or is it just, let's go? <laughs> Have I got any questions? Have I got a few questions? Um, so first of all, thanks girls. Nice to be back um, speaking with you. And yes, I've had the week to review. Did I use the week to review as in any SME? if I'm honest okay so <laughs> I have been through the data and and had a good look and it sort of it was it was as I expected up front last week as uh, Lauren shared we had some amazing results in what we ended up with was an A minus on Oakley's as a product and as she broke down each of the categories how we scored and how we compared to our category that was really really exciting and I went wow that's great then when I deep dived into this report I went wow I've got so many more questions that just brought up and, and I just kept going what about that what's that what's this how do I do that so the first thing I sort of came up with as I came through was I actually jumped to the um, uh, the data on the carbon life cycle particularly. That's where I went to. And how could Oakley's as a brand improve? Because I see it as a legacy brand. What more can it do? But then I did the flip and went, we've got some amazing score that Oakley's has come out with. How do we share that with our customers, our stakeholders? How do we um, bring that into the value set? because Oakley's has the value set of love is made, and this is love is made of the planet, of the future of, of our grandchildren, of their future, which is talks to the planet. And we need to share that as well. And also show that we're actually um, really a good brand in our category, what we're doing. And that's really great to know we're doing that. So Lauren, I've got a million and one questions. But I think it's like going, where to from here? What do I do? How do I share the story? What's my best approach on that? And then how do I do better? What do I start deep diving into? Because I, I also spoke about our, we have a, um, uh, one of our value sets is about continuous improvement. So how do I onboard this onto our continuous improvement uh, value without being overwhelmed at all or without making the business overwhelmed in any sense? Yeah, thanks, Karen, for sharing all of your insights. I think it's um, this is on you, and I think this is the whole part of this um, this podcast and this journey as well is to help share with other brands like yourself. Like, what does this maybe look like? How do I take the courage to move forward? It can be really overwhelming to begin with, and I think that one thing that's really good is so you've got the numbers, so you know you can start somewhere. You've seen what you look like, and then I think it's looking at like what are those short term and long term goals or strategies that we want to put in place off the back of this and I think for that there's a lot of internal and external stakeholder engagement so not like blowing that all out of the water and taking it um, making it really complicated but I think trying to think okay great we've already got some really good scores let's start communicating that to our consumer because that resonates with our brand so we're comfortable with that and I think we spoke about um, you spoke about transparency and trust a little bit and so I think for you guys if you've got three beautiful crackers or products in this particular range for the future, it would be footprinting and communicating the sustainability of all three of those. So you can say, okay, this is consistent with the range. This is something that we're doing as a brand. We're not just communicating our one product that's really good. The others might be really good as well. But I think being open and transparent about the range and then going back into the numbers, as you said, and thinking, okay, 
we'll look at carbon because we can see that broken down across our supply chain. So if we are in that process of continuous improvement and love is made, can we bring like love for the planet into that? And then I think think about where and how you're making all those continuous improvement decisions and bring a sustainability lens into that as well and try and, you know, does this data marry up? Is that useful in this point? And it will at those different points, but try to bring that, which, oh, Kim's got a hand up. I do have my hand up. <laughs> Very professional. Just, like you know in the uh, professional speak that's just like you keep talking till the end of that thought and then I'll ask a question <laughs> um, yeah, look yeah. we're all learning yeah yeah the um I was just gonna say I think just try and it needs to be another lens with which that's... you bring across all of your business decisions and so don't get overwhelmed by it all just like to begin with, let's go out and communicate to consumers. We can start to put stuff on our packaging or on our e-com site. Let's communicate what we're doing to our um, our distributors and our distribution partners. So whether that's the retailers or whether you work with different distribution partners, start to communicate to them as well and get feedback from them. What would you like to see from us in regards to this as well? And then with continuous improvement, thinking, okay, we can go back to that carbon footprint. We can see where our big buckets are. And for you, the buckets were um, on-farm production, so your ingredients, yes. as well as your manufacturing. So it's like, okay, let's work with our manufacturing experts to help us think how can we, what are the big things that are using energy or water across our site? And how can we, within our you know 20-year plan for increased production and those sorts of things, how can we bring a sustainability lens to that? Does that mean saying realistically, you know, we want to commit to renewable energy by 2025. That's something that you can actually just flick a switch on your bill and do as well. So you can do that really easily. And then maybe it's like, okay, what are the energy efficiency things that we can drive across our warehouse? Is that refrigeration? Is that heating? Is that, you know, making sure production lines are always at capacity? So it's breaking down. You can't do it all. But I think yeah. just step back, what can I talk about now straight away to my consumers because they care about this and they should know that that we care about it too. And then how can I communicate to my you know, other growth partners, so my retailers and my distributors, and then how as a brand can we start to bring this into our strategy? So that's having conversations and we will have Grant from Davidson Branding on here next week, but that's having conversations with, you know, people like that to think okay where does sustainability sit for us what are our brand pillars when it comes to sustainability what's the data that's sitting behind that and then how are we going to move forward on that so it seems like to me uh, this is just like uh, it's overwhelming to even start and then we've taken the first step and then it, and then it can actually as Karen has sort of said it can just be overwhelming all over again but the same rule applies that it's literally just chunking it down and taking one step. And so, and you know, when we all take one step in whatever it is we're doing, we're still surveying the land in front of us. And so it's a case of, yep, I'm just going to, my first step is actually going to be the consumer front. But Karen, you know, like you're looking at all aspects of your business all the time, like a, like just like honing radar, like, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger in one of his, whatever those movies were. Um, it was a very long time ago, I'm revealing my age. But um, so it's that, but I think this has been really, um, really useful for people that are following to see, well, you know, Karen has, you know, stepped up and volunteered to do this. And yet even she's sort of seeing that at this point of just going, oh, what do I do? What What's next? What do I do first? And what do I do second and last? And so, and then I think, yeah, Lauren, it's just that exactly what you've been talking about, that acknowledge the overwhelm and then chunk it down into the, almost into pillars of like, okay, this is what we're going to do and then we'll do that and then we'll do that. Can I say there too, Kim, is I think what even this conversation, talking it out on this podcast like this is going is what really is is when you get this data is is actually what it's about is just having the conversation to break down and go instead of just landing it in the lap of one person and going right set a plan off you go off you it's go. like having the conversation that brings in all 
all those little bits and and i obviously have a team that says you know someone can think about manufacturing or somebody else is thinking about branding somebody else sits and comes in and says okay what does that do on you know current electricity bills example laura you know how we're we using electricity what there's everybody can bring something else to the table that we can actually start to have a conversation instead of instead of going i have to provide the solution like here and now mm. it is the the step by step kim that you spoke about and bringing it all together and coming back to that strategy that's so true karen what's really beautiful and what a lot of companies that we work with do is so we have an internal champion that we work with so in this case that's you so we've done all of the hard work we've got all the data so you've got solid numbers that can show you what's happening share this with your team and then we often come along and run internal workshops around like what does this mean for procurement what does this mean for manufacturing what might this mean for our brand and just a high level brainstorm and you will see what's really beautiful is that everyone on your team will want to do something to better your sustainability and they will all come, like these light bulbs will start to go off and they will all come with beautiful suggestions or strategies to be able to deliver on it and will really be proud to bring that forward. Like, you know, recently we were doing some work with a drinks brand and their procurement team were like, right, now I can see, okay, as I'm sourcing these different ingredients, these are things that I can then go back to my suppliers and say, these are important to us as a brand. So I want to make sure that you you meet these requirements and then looking at communicating their, their packaging, they're like, right, okay, now I can see where that fits in and this is what I need to strive for in my packaging. So it's not, it's never going to rest with one person. I think this is where we see sustainability work the best is not in a silo on the side over here, but actually it's fully integrated across the business with data to, to track how you're going so that people can see that continuous improvement. And everyone will, it's one of those topics where, you know, everyone really wants to step up. They yeah. want to be part of it. Yeah, yeah and I think to, you get that yeah, buy-in, yeah. don't you? Like if you, you know, if one person sort of starts and is doing this and then, you know, and then it, how what you're saying in terms of it ties into other teams and by doing it that way where you're then engaging with other people within the organisation on their level on their area of expertise and interest as opposed to some sort of edict from i don't know above sort of saying we're going to do this from now on but this seems to be a really um you know like almost lego bricks building sort of way that and then you end up with everyone being as sort of engaged or um you know committed to the end goal and measured through data also, Kim, you mm. know, like what Lauren talks to, we've all got the starting point. We've got those numbers in front of us and we can measure every time what is contributing as we as we go the continuous improvement journey. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So I think it is really about involving everyone, thinking about what you want to do, but don't make it really big. Like, you know, you'd be amazed what you could get if you then, you know, go back to the team, share this with them and then have, you know, a, a one hour or one and a half hour workshop or something. Maybe it's even over lunch. Um, everyone loves working their lunch hour, don't they? <laughs> the good old SME. Isn't that standard? Oh, no. um, you know, but sit down and just, you so much will come out of it. I think it's about having the tools and the insights to empower the team to do what they want to do. And some of the things and the strategies will be, really complicated you're like right we're not about to you know kit out our whole warehouse with new really energy efficient um equipment but what we can do is maybe just call up our energy provider and say actually we want to transition we want to switch to renewable energy done that's huge and then you know all of the there'll be some really easy things you can do now versus longer term strategies that you need to put in place with a sustainability lens um and then i guess it's just it's getting the message out there trying to okay you know, you've got a great score as you said an a minus take that to your consumers and um and see what they say and then also it means that as you get pressure down your supply chain which you will if you haven't been asked already it will be coming around how sustainable is your product does that meet as your buyer does that meet our requirements and you can say yeah well actually we're above average for our category all that sort of stuff and i think that um, will bring a lot of trust with those distribution partners too 
Lauren, can I ask a question in regards to, so when we do food safety and we have to um, prove along our supply chain that we you know we're, we're HACCP or otherwise accredited, and there's a whole series of questions that we are presented from our customers to, to answer, is there such a thing in this space that, that we can then provide to our suppliers to go like a questionnaire or is that is that your space? Is that How does that work? Yeah, so we do we do stuff in that space. There's nothing standardised or formalised at the moment there, and I'm just trying to think globally. There's nothing either. So, for us, what we do is we would work with you, and then we have like you know on farm practices surveys and those sorts of things that will influence or um, or change the result based on the the scientific methodology with which you need to use to measure a footprint. So they're different. They're different factors, again, if that makes sense. They're probably things that businesses aren't necessarily collecting. And where all of this data is going at the moment is it's a lot of it is um, will eventually be remotely available. So people don't have to fill in forms and provide that data for you. Over the next sort of five years, you'll just be able to say, okay, I get my stuff from here, from this supplier and this location, and We'll be able to generate those insights for you so but we can work up and down supply chains to collect that information and that but again like collecting data and information from suppliers can be huge so it's thinking okay which suppliers do i talk to am i just going to focus so you know what one of the steps for you might be next is okay we identify that the two big material buckets for you are what you do on your manufacturing site and then the ingredients that you use in your products so We've decided, okay, for the manufacturing site, we're just going to transition to renewable energy. It's all we can do right now. And then as we move over to um, newer equipment, we will look for the most energy efficient equipment to bring into our plant. And then we can break down all of the ingredients in your Oakleys and we can see, okay, actually, the ones that are driving the greatest footprint might be wheat and um, salt, for example. And so you might say, okay, they're the only two ingredients out of an ingredient profile of, you know, 10 or 15 ingredients, or there's not that many in there, but just hypothetically, we're only going to talk to our wheat producer and we're going to talk to our salt supplier and we're going to ask for this information for those two. And then we're actually going to increase that, improve that data and then see what that does to our footprint. So there are little ways that you can go about it um, mm. to try and improve that data resolution without it being overwhelming. Yeah, stops the overwhelm, absolutely. Yeah, now as you talk it through, I can see and understand that for sure. And I think also a big step for a lot of companies, again, it ten, depends on what sort of technology you use, is often just like you're not changing anything. So for this first 12 months or six months, you're not changing anything, but just bring data transparency to your consumers, to your teams internally, so they can start to see, okay, this is the footprint or the impact that this ingredient has. So you don't have to change your supply chains. You don't have to do anything like that. You're not going all crazy. All you're doing is creating awareness. And then once people have seen that for a period, it's like, okay, great. We've got a bit of an understanding of the patterns and what it looks like. What do we now want to do going forward with this information? What's within our capacity to, to deliver on? And that's very exciting, really, really nice way to look at how we can improve. And I'm actually, yeah, feeling even from when we started this conversation, when I laid everything on the table to now, I'm going, okay, I'm feeling a whole lot calmer, right? We're just in that few moments that we've stepped through. So I suppose if, if we flip that and go, well, how do we then rah-rah and, and share how good we are currently rating in our category and what does that mean? What does that look like? So I think, you know, the eco school would be a great thing to communicate to your consumers. I think that's really clear. I think you can see on that scale A through to E, you know, it's really easy for your consumers to see that. So that might be something that you could um, start to do on an e-com site is usually really easy. And I'm not sure, I do apologise, but do you do any direct sales to the public? No. No, not or very little. Yeah, so you could, so if you did, that's where you could do that. Or if your website's used as brand discovery, I'm not sure if a lot of people before they look to range, if they go to the website, then still put it on the website. I think it's good for, for those guys to see. You could then look at doing a trial of printing the eco score on a smaller run of your boxes 
or even if you wanted to, I know it's a bit manual, but instead of actually changing the whole design, you can just get some stickers printed and you can get someone to, to put them on it. And maybe you look at that for one of your smaller retailers or something like that, or you can do it in partnership with your retailers. So there's little small, really, and I know that's manual, putting stickers on something, but actually it's a great way to test the water before you actually have to change your design and do a run of, I don't know how many boxes you do at a time, but it just allows you to control that. And then maybe you can choose, okay, for these orders that are going out to this supplier, for the next six months, we're going to have an eco score on them and we're going to run a select marketing campaign with a shelf pull out or something like that to communicate what we're doing. We also, in the, ne in the next 12 months, have a strategy around getting back to talk to our consumer, as we previously did, on a more face-to-face -face level through, you know, the ability of good food shows and, and that type of thing. And I think this is a really good example by which to take this here over the next 12 months to test and to speak to them about it and see what that response is. Because as a brand, I know the benefits of talking to a consumer face to face yes. uh, where you get the opportunity to engage with their information their belief about your brand and what they want to see see it do better in um, that would be a real opportunity there for us as well yeah definitely and I think when you're like you guys had amazing results there's lots of different touch points but when you do next do your range review I will definitely take the eco fact sheet about your product and say hey look you know by the numbers, Oakley's is doing really well. And you can do that before you've even put anything on pack. And you can maybe sell that to them as an opportunity. Say, hey, together, do we want to run a joint marketing campaign um, saying how you and together with us through procuring more sustainable products are reaching their emissions targets? And then also the other slides around the individual metrics which that showed that, um, you know, overall, Oakley's was performing better than the category average. I think that's really um, powerful for a distributor as well. Absolutely. No, that sounds and really exciting. And you can do right now, like you can probably email that to your distributors and your contacts. So it's maybe just off the back of this, maybe it's just a little bit of a PR pack that you can get together that doesn't have to be complicated. It's like, hey, really exciting. This is what we're doing. We've always been a leader in our category. Everything we do is made with love. We're at the beginning of our sustainability journey and here are some results we'd like to share with you. Mm. Great okay. idea. Awesome. Well, hopefully that's helped break down um, what you might want to do with it. But really excitingly, we're actually going to get Grant from Davidson Branding on next week who can talk to you more and if he maybe we'll get him to do his homework before next week and he can maybe come up with some examples of what that communication might look like for you to make it really easy because I guess one of the touch points for this data, so typically we'll see it, you know, reaching the the business owners or managers like yourself who think okay, this is the vision or this is what i can do for my business it'll reach the procurement teams as they look to improve sustainability and then the marketing teams as they look to try and communicate this to um, your consumers so i think that would be um that'll be really interesting to see what grant has to say as to how you can really elevate the messaging and um and some really easy wins and whether you've got an internal or external marketing team this stuff is absolute gold for them because I think everyone wants to talk about sustainability, but there's yeah. caution because you think, well, what can I say that's, you know, not going to get me caught up in greenwashing that means that I'm actually building trust and that consumers, that actually resonates with consumers. And now you've got the data behind that. It gives people a lot more confidence to be able to, to make claims and call things out. So that'll be the next step for us, which will hopefully then, Karen, give you some really, um, you know, easy steps forward um, to, to try and take this data and drive action whilst your team then also thinks about what they can bring and, and the different elements that it means to them. So from feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling really excited now. <laughs> that's nice after this short That's podcast, the way to do it. Yes, <laughs> that's it. That's it, definitely. So it's thank actually you. like that's 100% the journey. It's yeah. because it's not like it's new and I can't iterate that enough. Like it's new and then you get to it and like there is so much scientific methodology and research that goes behind like these. None of these are simple, easy concepts to get your head around so it's completely normal to think oh my god like what is this how does it work and what do I do with it but then it's just yeah it's working through it slowly piece by piece to hopefully um, make it usable yep thank you 
Fantastic, you two. So next week we're going to have a special guest, which is very exciting. <laughs> and uh, we'll, uh, we'll hopefully uh, see you all then. Absolutely. I look forward to speaking with Grant and speaking with you lovely ladies again next week. Likewise. Thanks a lot.